nine Star Wars epics in one game. It's a tall order, but that's what Traveler's Tales has crammed into their latest adventure, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Each of the main nine Star Wars films is present here, with a beat-by-beat -beat recreation realized through Lego bricks and figurines. Like past LEGO Star Wars titles, this is kid-friendly fare, with a light-hearted mood and gentle difficulty. It's a breezy little game, but that doesn't mean dumbed-down tech. Far from it. There's some impressive stuff on display here. LEGO Star Wars makes a great first impression. After a brief introductory cutscene, the game drops you into a selection screen where you pick which movie you'd like to start from. Each film is represented by a charming stop-motion style diorama made out of Lego bricks. Players are free to play any of the initial movies in each trilogy, The Phantom Menace, A New Hope, and The Force Awakens, with subsequent films locked until you beat their prequel. The game versions of each film are slightly modified retellings that hew fairly close to the original stories, albeit with some trimming and a lot of comedic license. These are brisk and fairly painless adventures. Each of the nine films takes a couple hours or so to complete, and I never found myself challenged, although it's still an enjoyable release. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga uses a proprietary game engine dubbed the NTT Engine, which seems to be an evolution of the engine tech used in prior Traveler's Tales LEGO games. Details about this engine online are scant, but it's clear that all the last-gen rendering staples, TAA, SSR, PBR materials, and GI are present here and seem to be quite well implemented. LEGO is well suited to modern renderers. LEGO bricks are simple, with sharp, angular shapes, flat surfaces, and minimal surface detail, making them relatively easy to render convincingly and anti-alias. The relative simplicity of LEGO combined with the tech at hand here produces great results that are often quite close to the real thing. Characters have fine surface details, just look at Poe's shirt. The machine-molded imperfections of real LEGO bricks have been simulated in the texture map, with slight raised areas representing his shirt. Reflections are handled using a mix of cube maps and SSR, but they work quite well on the LEGO surfaces, particularly on the characters' faces and their glossy hair pieces, although SSR artifacts can be intrusive in some cases. Geometric density is generally quite high. Virtually every peg, hole, and facet of the interlocking bricks is modeled here. Edges are suitably rounded, and it really does seem a close match for the real items. Poking around for a while, I did manage to spot a few unnaturally flat edges, mostly the backsides of larger LEGO pieces, though these were rare. Incidental objects and enemies fly apart into LEGO bricks when you hit them, which is a satisfying effect. This is a classic trick in LEGO games, and it still feels fresh here. Combat animations look and feel great as well, particularly while wielding lightsabers. Everything flows really nicely while remaining responsive. The sheer volume of variety here impresses. Every major environment from old nine movies is represented here, and they all feel like a good facsimile of the area in the film. Even shorter zones get a polished treatment, with plenty of unique assets. Finally, the post-processing is very effective. A high-quality bokeh depth of field is applied in close-ups and cutscenes, which gives them an appropriately cinematic look. An object-based motion blur with a reasonably high sample count rounds out the package, although camera motion blur is absent. So what doesn't work? My primary quibble here is with the environments. Most outdoor areas are primarily modeled out of non-LEGO elements, which is fine, but they sometimes don't blend particularly well with the LEGO. This forest scene, for instance, is packed with high-frequency detail on the ground and realistic foliage. A more stripped-back approach, with simpler textures and a higher density of LEGO elements, would look better, I think. Other recent LEGO games, as well as the LEGO movies, have relied almost entirely on LEGO elements, so it's a little odd to see this aesthetic clash here. The lack of texture detail on the LEGO pieces can make them look a little bit strange when the lighting and shadowing isn't working well. In this cutscene, for instance, the ship looks almost flat shaded, like an old 3D game. The smaller details, like the holes in the underside of this ship or the interior of this cup, really stick out when they aren't being shaded accurately. These are problems in most modern games, of course, and are inherent to typical shadow maps and GI techniques, but the simple texturing makes it more conspicuous here than in other titles. 
Finally, the lack of any ray tracing features does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity. LEGO Builder's journey showcased how incredible LEGO pieces can look when paired with ray tracing techniques like RT Reflections, RTGI, and RTAO. As we'll soon see, the new consoles have plenty of performance on tap in this title, which could have been harnessed for one or more of these effects. You knew the boy was going to win. Somehow you knew it. Bring the parts to the main hangar. I'll come by your shop later on so you can release the boy. Each current gen release has a frame rate limit setting, which has two options, 30 FPS and 60 FPS. These essentially amount to two different visual modes, although on paper the differences don't look especially large. PS5 and Series X target a full 2160p in their 30fps and 60fps modes. Series S? That falls down to 60% on each axis, or 1296p in both modes. Dynamic resolution is in play here, though most of the time it's not especially impactful. Let's start with the Xboxes. Series X is a locked 2160p in its 30fps mode, and is a close to locked 2160p in its 60fps mode, with minimal dynamic resolution. The lowest resolution in the 60fps mode that I counted was 1800p. Its weaker sibling similarly doesn't deviate from its 1296p target res when running at 30fps, though engaging the 60fps toggle can see it drop a little bit on occasion down to a low of 1152p. PS5 doesn't hit its marks quite as well. At 30fps, the PS5 can't quite maintain a full 4K at all times. It drops to 1872p or so at worst. 60fps is where things really start to buckle, however. Here the PS5 frequently runs at 1440p, with full 4K a rare sight. Gameplay tends to hover between 1440p and 1800p, while cutscenes often lock to 1440p for long periods. The lowest resolution I counted on the 60fps mode on PS5 was 1296p. It's a strange outcome considering the results on Series X. In this scene, Series X is rendering around twice the pixels, for instance. Overall image quality is strong regardless of internal resolution, however. The TAA implementation is respectable, and the relatively simple nature of the artwork makes it easy to anti-alias. All consoles, even the Series S, resolve a clean and stable image that looks good on a 4K set. Outside of resolution, all consoles appear to share the same visual settings. There is one minor difference between the modes, however. At 60fps, the per-object motion blur present in the 30fps modes is absent. It's an unfortunate cut, but not a huge deal. Thankfully, the 30fps and 60fps modes perform basically as advertised, with one massive exception. On all current-gen consoles, each mode is locked at its framerate target essentially all of the time. Nothing I tried could induce even a single duplicate frame. Intense combat breezes by with nary a hitch, and high-speed chases fail to trigger streaming issues. The only exception to this technically is that for a moment near the beginning of The Force Awakens, the framerate would briefly dip on all consoles. It only lasted for a few seconds, and was the only real framerate issue I could spot across many hours of play. Well, sort of. You see, cutscenes in LEGO Star Wars technically run at a locked frame rate. All our frame rate tools show a perfectly stable 30fps or 60fps depending on the selected graphics mode. And it's true, going frame by frame, there are obvious visual changes in every single frame. Alpha effects update every frame for instance, as do screen space reflections. Object and camera animation, however, refresh on a highly irregular basis. Take a look at the opening cutscene of A New Hope running in the 60fps mode on PS5. In the first second of this shot, the objects and camera refresh 52 times, skipping a frame roughly every 8 frames. But notice that even when there is no object or camera animation in a frame, the background alpha effects continue to animate. This cutscene is running at a full 60fps, despite the fact that most of the animation work is actually running around 52fps. But it gets worse. Let's fast forward a bit. Here, we have a simple shot of Captain Antilles running. There are 30 unique frames of animation here over a one second span, although they are extremely unevenly paced. Some new animation frames immediately follow an animation frame, which is what you'd expect to see in a 60fps update. Others are duplicated once, which is what you'd expect to see in a 30fps update. And some others are duplicated for three frames before there's an update. 
which is what you'd expect to see at a 15 frames per second update. It looks extremely jerky. Again, other elements of the image, most obviously the screen space reflections, continue to update at a perfect 60 FPS. This update looks extremely odd and makes these cutscenes look much less consistent than they should. So what's going on? Initially, I suspected that these might be performance related drops of some kind. But when I booted up the game on a capable PC and ran the game at low settings at 720p, the same issues were present. It doesn't seem like GPU load affects things much at all. I also contemplated whether this might be a stylistic decision. After all, the recent LEGO movies update most character animations at half rate, at 12 frames per second in a 24 frame per second movie. This helps give animations a stop motion quality and helps to hide the interpolation inherent to keyframing in computer animation. But why would some object animations run at half rate while others run much closer to full rate? And why would there be so much inconsistency in frame delivery when the animations were running at half rate? Looking at the 30 FPS modes provides some insight. At 30 FPS, most animation work appears to run in sync with the output frame rate. Object and camera animations, plus alpha effects, screen space reflections, and every other image element refresh 30 times per second with one new frame, followed by a duplicate frame, and so on at 60 Hz. A proper 30 FPS, in other words. Still, there are some cutscenes that seem to run object and camera animations at sub 30 FPS rates. The main animations in this sequence run at approximately 23 FPS, for instance. Again, it's possible this is an artistic decision, but if so, why does this cutscene a few minutes earlier run perfectly at 30 FPS? There's something wrong with the animation interpolation, it seems. Either that, or there's been a stylistic decision to limit the frame rate of certain elements that has been implemented in a very inconsistent way. It's an unfortunate and strange issue. The mismatched frame rates feel very off-putting. One final note. I took a brief look at the last-gen versions, specifically the PS4 and PS4 Pro releases. PS4 turns in a native 1080p, unsurprisingly, while PS4 Pro uses checkerboarding to reach a 4K output. Both consoles run at a stable 30fps with what appear to be identical quality settings to the current-gen releases. The primary visual upgrades on current-gen are resolution enhancements alongside a boost to 60fps, which is appreciated despite the cutscene issue. Better quality settings or ray tracing would be appreciated, of course, but unfortunately are absent here. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is an excellent LEGO adventure that is sure to please fans. One game with nine films of content, encompassing a variety of gameplay styles. It's not for everyone, but series veterans and younger players will likely enjoy it. Graphically, this is an impressive effort. The LEGO figurines look tantalizingly close to the real thing at times, particularly in cutscenes. Traveler's Tales has nailed the look of the imperfectly molded plastic finish on LEGO. The frame rate issue in cutscenes is a sticking point, however. 60 FPS is definitely the best way to play on current gen, but cutscenes look like a bit of a jittery mess as a result. Given the quality of the rest of the game, it really sticks out. Hopefully some sort of solution can be found. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. To view a high quality version of this video, check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. That's all for me for now. Thanks for watching.